Ahoy, sailors! Captain Mo here. I am so glad that you can join me for our lesson all about the wind. Now, if you've ever gone sailing before, or if you've flown a kite before, you might have an idea why the wind is so important to sailing. Now, if you know the wind just as that pesky thing that messes up your hair, or that thing that makes it difficult to play cards outside, or that thing that tosses sand in your sandwich at the beach, well, I've got news for you. As sailors, we, we love, love the wind. wind! Just like a car uses gas as fuel to travel, a sailboat uses the wind as fuel to travel around the world. And did you know that 70% of the earth is covered in water? That's a lot of water to sail upon. So for sailboats, no wind equals no sailing. What is the wind anyway? I can't see it. Well, wind is the horizontal movement of air measured by speed and direction. But how do I know if there's wind or not? I can't see it. Hmm, let's think. Can you remember the last time it was a windy day or night? Take a moment to think. How did you know that there was wind? Maybe you could smell your neighbor's cooking. Mmm. <laughs> or perhaps you saw or heard the trees moving. Those are both great indicators that there's wind. But that doesn't tell us how fast it's moving or where it's coming from. Well, just like we have to know where a gas station is to put fuel in the car, we have to know where the wind is coming from so that we can adjust our sail, so that we can capture that fuel just right. For example, if the wind is coming from behind us, then we have to adjust the sail to catch the wind, so we can sail downwind. So we'll have to let out the sheets. If the wind is coming from our side, or from in front of us, we'll have to pull the sail in, Make it flatter, almost like an airplane wing or a bird wing, turned on its side. Let's say I'm headed to a birthday party on the other side of the lake, and I have to make it there by sailboat before they sing happy birthday and cut the cake. I have to know where the wind is coming from so that I can angle my sail correctly. If I don't, I might not make it to the party in time. And a flappy sail is not a happy sail. So let's trim the sail using the main sheet and away we go! Woohoo! So how do I know from where the wind is coming if I don't have a compass? Hmm, I'm gonna have to look for some clues and maybe do some tests. I can look for ripples on the water, flags, Moss caught on the rigging, moss in the trees. I can do the grass test. I can make a wind wand. And if there's a sail up pointed into the wind, the sails work like flags. So I see the wind is coming from that way. But what is that way? The wind is named by the direction from which it is coming. We use cardinal directions to name the wind. There's north, south, east, west, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, south, southeast, south, southwest, west, southwest, north, northeast. <sighs> Let's just keep it general for now. If you don't have a compass, all you need is a sunny day and a watch. The sun rises in the east, passes through the south 
around noontime, and it sets in the west. I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida, which is in the northeast part of the state. To the east is the Atlantic Ocean, miles and miles of ocean water until you get to Africa. If you're watching the sunrise, you know you're facing east. The west are miles of land, the Gulf of Mexico, and more miles and miles of the United States until you get to California. If you're looking at the sunset, you know that you're facing west. Now, if it's about midday, the sun passes through the south. It's about midday now. So, sun's up there. Behind me must be south. I've got my ribbon attached to my pencil to tell me where the wind is coming from. Looks like it's blowing from the west. Great! We know where the wind is coming from. But how fast is it moving? Hmm. To measure wind speed, we need an anemometer. A what? See that thing at the top of the mast spinning around? That's an anemometer. It sends a signal to a screen in the cockpit that tells us how fast the wind is blowing. We are going to make an anemometer using these items. Cardboard, a ruler, scissors, a pencil with a good eraser. A marker, tape, glue, four cups, tiny ones, and a needle. Let's get started with our cardboard, ruler, pencil, and scissors. You can set the other items to the side. We are going to make two strips out of our cardboard that are one foot by three quarter inch wide. We need to find the center of our pieces. So we'll take our ruler, 12 inches make up a foot, so half of that is six. There's six, that's about center. You can set your ruler aside now grab your needle. Go ahead and poke a hole in the center of your cardboard. Careful not to poke your finger on the other side. And we're going to make an X or a T shape with our cardboard. And we don't want it to move around. We want it to stay in this shape. So we'll apply some glue. You can make sure that the holes line up by sticking the needle back through. And letting 
your pieces of cardboard dry. You can take the needle out and put a weight on your pieces until they dry. We'll set that aside for now. While that's drying, grab your cups. Pick a cup, grab your marker, and have fun decorating. Grab four pieces of tape, and you can put them on the edge of your table. Check your cardboard, make sure it doesn't move. Now that it's dry, we can attach our cups to our cardboard. Take your pencil and the needle. Go ahead and insert the needle through the center of the cardboard. Find the center of your eraser and carefully put the needle as far down into the eraser as you can. And there you have it. There's your anemometer. Now, all we need for it to work is to go find some wind. Take your super cool anemometer to an open space outdoors to measure the wind, or you can place it in front of a fan. Set your timer or stopwatch for one minute. In that minute, count how many times your decorated cup goes around and write that number next to test number one on a piece of paper. Repeat this three more times for a total of four readings. We'll head back inside to finish our calculations. Let's find the wind speed. This is my test, my log for my anemometer reading at Queens Harbor on May 1st at 12 p.m. I add together all the revolutions per minute of each test. Because we did four tests, we're going to divide this number by four, and we get 46 revolutions per minute on average. The person who invented this anemometer said that 10 revolutions is approximately equal to one mile per hour. So we'll divide our average revolutions per minute by 10 and we get 4.6 miles per hour. So we have found that at noon on the 1st of May in Queens Harbor, the wind was traveling at an average of 4.6 miles per hour. I wonder how fast the wind was moving where you did your test. Thank you so much for joining me in our first week all about wind awareness. I can't wait to hear about your adventure.
I'd love to hear how it went, Maggie, your anemometer. How fast the wind was blowing when you tested your anemometer. And what clues you found that told you where the wind was coming from. Please bring your findings with you to our Thursday Zoom meeting at 4 p.m. And keep an eye out in your email for a link to join. Until then, fair winds and don't forget to bring your fruit snacks. Captain Mo out.